Oh, five past, time to start. It's gonna be a really short talk this time. It's just six slides or so, and then it's demo time. Um, so yeah, um, when I started doing open ARM GPUs, and it was shortly after FOSDEM 2011 that we formed the idea and started it. And as some of you might remember, we were here in 2012, I was here in 2012, um, one floor down, one room over there, um, showing off Lima. Which was a very intense, intense experience. This room was so full, and it, I had spent three months hacking away like crazy. Um, it was a very nice experience then. And what I've said in the next year, in 2012, is which yeah, Ben turned up here um, and did some shader stuff because I split up the project in shaders and command scheme as I usually do. Ben was there, uh, and Connor uh, 16, uh, Ben 14, right? 14. When did he start? 15. Not. Excessively young, yeah. Didn't want to tell us. He didn't want to tell us his address, um, just so we could send him our hardware because he was still attached to have to have to ask his parents whether he can give that sort of information to us. Um, so what I said through all of 2012, during the second half of 2012, the um, Chromebook came out, the Arm Chromebook, which I will be showing off on, um, came out, and what I said is we will never ever work on it on the newer version of the Mali before we produce the proper driver for the older version of the Mali. So we first finish Lima and have a proper working driver there. And we will never, and I put my foot down hard to you and to Connor all the time that we would never ever do that. So here I am. <laughs> the other code is, yeah, still lying around the code I wrote for last year. It's still lying around the repo. I haven't cleaned it up yet. Still need to push it out. It wasn't working fully yet. Some things were, um, some SEOs were still not working. So there's there's a lot to do there still, but yeah. So in the slides, I will try to not mention Lima at all. <coughs> um, I even tried rebranding it. Yep, that's why I chose Kamio, otherwise I would have said no. It's two separate drivers anyway. Um, the hardware doesn't care that much. It feels the same. It's two separate drivers anyway. That's why we got the new name. So yeah. Um, I, some few months ago, I said, no, this year I'm not doing anything for FOS. And my girlfriend asked me, what are you doing? Because you usually do something. No, not this year. I'm, I'm taking it quiet. I'm, I'm going to take it really calm, take some shake and just calm down January. And somewhere around late Christmas, she asked again, what are you doing for FOS then? And I said, well, the schedule is a bit empty. It's, there's not that many people want to talk because Ian is probably not here. People like him were too lazy to file even a talk, even though he had some things to catch in LC and this and that. So there was no talk. Um, but yeah, final talk is I like this slot because I can al also tell you at the end to clean up uh, and don't so that I don't have to do that. So that's always nice. Um, so yeah, I basically did what I do every year, um, FOSDEM fever and write something up for you guys. Um, I've been really lazy about it. I only have six slides, and this is one of those six, and the two of them, uh, one says demo and the other says question. Uh, <laughs> I just have, I have three slides with actual content, and the first one is actually fully recycled from last year. So last year I, shortly I very briefly mentioned that I was working on, on the Kamo driver. Let me just put that slide back in. So. It's, it's it's really nothing. Um, yeah, one of the reasons why I did this again was uh, it was empty. The dev room was a bit empty this year. It's always difficult to find people to talk about graphics. I don't understand why. Um, because I know that there's always a good crowd here. Lots of people want to hear very interesting talks, which they usually are. But I always have to run behind people and try to get them to file talks. Um, yeah, I have nothing to do in January. No customers, so... Why not? Why not do this? And I, it's been a while since I last tested my good friend at Arm, Jen Davis. So Jen, this is for you. Um, yeah, uh, lazy. Uh, what was else? Yeah, that's pretty much it. I was a bit very lazy. Um, I only have one demo as well for you guys. Um, nothing more. Just one render. That's it. No progression as usual. And then looking at one cube again, and then the next cube again. And that's a bit boring. So I didn't even bother with that. Um, yeah, I've been so lazy that I've only written 10,000 lines of code in the last six weeks. <coughs> so yeah, 
let's go to actual content. So this is fully last year's slide, as I promised, no content at all. Um, so yeah, the Tamil driver is just uh, a, com a completely fresh part for the new uh, Mali 2 series, uh, which first got released in 2012 already. So with the Exynos 5 series, that was 2012. Uh, October 2012, which was all very, very long ago. We're 2015. We started in yeah 2012 in the beginning of the year is when I showed Lima. So we had a few only a few months before that hardware came out. And we haven't done anything much on it. Well, enough. Uh, we will show that, or I will show that. Connor is actually pretty far along as well with his um, reverse engineering stuff because it turned out, as Ben said from the start, <laughs> that um, the... Um, shader, the unified shader that is in the Mali hardware these days in the 2 series, it's unified before it was separate, fragment and vertex, now it's unified, that it would always be based on the really crazy um, but fast architecture of the fragment shader. <coughs> and it is, so I Connor had a bit of fun. He really had a bit of fun. It wasn't as, as horrible as the probably the first reverse engineering was. So yeah, um, one thing that happened in the last year, and after showing this slide, I spent a while whining about a lack of a community for, for instance, Exynos. Um, I'm been, I am very active, as is Hans, and as is probably a few other guys in this room, in the Linux Sunset community. Um, this thing is very, very unique. At least it was very unique a year ago. Um, and I complain a bit that this sort of community doesn't exist for Exynos or for other SOCs, and it really, the, it, the situation was such that all the information, the, the way I set up this Chromebook, for instance, is just a few blog entries left and right, and the information is just outdated everywhere. You have to kind of piece this together yourself. There is no, there was no nice wiki, there was no mailing list, there was no IRC channel. So at the talk round, after my talk <coughs> last year, um, somebody in the audience, um, asked, yeah, so what do we have to do? And I first completely misinterpreted this, this question and answered something else entirely, which is something that is sometimes is recommended the speakers to just um, answer the question that you uh, think was asked, but I should have listened more closely. Um, Milan, can you stand up? This guy in the last year brought up a server, a mailing list, an IRC channel, and we actually have quite a community in the meantime. It's not as big yet as Linux Sunkey because we, at Sunkey we've been at it for two years. And the community that was started at Exynos has been growing slowly over the year, but it's getting somewhere. And it's, it's quite amazing. So Milan, thanks a lot. <coughs> so yeah, um, last year in, uh, when was it? September, October 2013, I spent like three weeks working on, on, the, on the Tamil, on the, on the new Mali 2 series. Um, I spent a week and a half um, looking what the commands being, what was being said between, what was being thrown around between the, the kernel and, and the user space. Uh, I couldn't use LD preload like I did before with uh, Lima. Uh, I had to use ptrace. Um, I had to fix up some um, memory permissions as well, so that I could actually teach uh, uh, so that Ptrace could access the memory of the Mali. There was a tiny bit of kernel hacking needed as well, so at least that built on the, on the ARM Chromebook, even though there was no community. Um, so I got Capture and Replay fully working already, which is a big first step for starting a reverse engineering project. Uh, and I also spent a bit of time exposing the shader compiler, unlike um, with the older uh, Mali versions where, which we, where we use Lima. Well, first of all, um, the projects I do, I, sp I split them up. It's usually two separate projects anyway. Um, there's a shader compiler and there's the command printer. There <coughs> are slightly <coughs> different skills <coughs> needed for each and there's a lot of work in each and it's something that is nicely <coughs> separatable so you can have two people work in their own little area and they need very little community. They of course they need some and, you've been and there is some information that you have to have available but it's a nice, nice little split up. It's a nice way to, to have a team work on one guy and one guy on, on the same project. So I spent some time looking at assembler and finding deep down the shader compiler and what the structure that it needs to be passed, need to have passed, <coughs> what it looks like. So I exposed that. 
and I stopped working on it for more than a year. But it was still something that I had to show on, on my Lima talk last year. So this year, um, I've been a lot smarter. Uh, four years ago, I had never done any 3D driver work. I had always done display driver work, display driver work, a uh, bit of 2D acceleration, a bit of media, a bit of everything, and I've changed quite a lot in those areas. But I'd never touched a 3D driver because there was there's enough to do everywhere in EA. So what I since I w uh, was going to open this whole area up anyway, I did all the work. Even had to learn about OpenGL. I'd never done that before. Read a book or something. So yeah, uh, I was not really sure what to do in the initially. So I just poked at raw memory dumps. And this is what you guys saw in 2012, with me looking at raw memory dumps and then trying to make sense of it and writing up some code to do it uh, that actually uses it. And these were those four or five renders that you saw. Um, so it, I wasted a lot of time just looking at, at, at almost raw hex or, uh, or at least uh, integers, or integers. So it wasn't that very, effi not, not that efficient. Um, this year, uh, no. For Q3 Arena, when I brought that up, I thought, okay, this doesn't work anymore. It's just uh, too complex. Um, I'm not going to handle be able to handle all, all the information. So why don't you do the smart thing and finally write a Pi three lazy dump? So I wrote that and spent a lot of time on that, and that's why the year after that I showed off, uh, showed up, uh, showed off um, Quake three Arena. This time around, after. Uh, caption replay, after exposing the binary compiler, I said, okay, now I sit down and write up that parser. Uh, I could have used probably uh, NVIDIA's or Nouveau's Revenge, but instead I kind of liked another workflow um, where I dumped to a C file, whatever, uh, whatever, I, dumped, uh, whatever I grabbed from uh, the command stream, I dumped it to a C file. Uh, I can then compile another file with that file and just replay it. Now I, the parser is also just plain C, and what it does is it just dumps all the structures with a one header file. I just use one header file with all the command stream information that I need. And it's all in one workflow, just build one, build the other, build the other. And it's if it yeah, it still shows up the replay after parsing, then I had something good. If the engine wasn't complaining, then I had something good. So I built up a full parser. Um, myself, it's also no XML in there, only C, which is the reason why I don't really like revenge much. Um, so I know quite a lot of, uh, at least all the big things of what's uh, needed for uh, for the Tamil driver or for Mali C series, um, where textures live, uh, what the structures look like. It's all the big questions have been answered. Most of the tiny bits like DL space or um, Typing for uniforms, attributes, and, and variants, which are the three variables that you uh, use uh, to encoders. Um, I don't have that figured out yet, but that's a tiny bit of the work. It just takes time. Uh, there's nothing big scary waiting anymore. Um, yeah, and everything is completely different. It all feels the same, but it's not the same. The only code that I could reuse from Lima uh, is uh, a bit of texturing code. Um, so I still haven't found the bit that just says, uh, I still haven't bothered to find the bit that just says, just uses as a plain texture. It usually swiggles it so that it uh, memory access is a bit better, so that the caching is a bit easier. Uh, and mid mapping is a bit easier, or at least scaling is a bit easier. So that's the only bit of code I could reuse. That's about 50 lines of C. Everything else, everything else is, is pretty new. It all feels the same. Uh, yeah. And it was a, actually a doll because I had the experience of the first uh, Mali series, but it's a lot of new code. Uh, so yeah, uh, I built up the par I built up the parser, and I was kind of kind of working two weeks ago, and then I took the more difficult render uh, and said, okay, I have this big C file with a bunch of structures in there. And with all the all the vertex data and this and that raw in there, the text is still raw in there. Let's just try that apart one by one and build up build up the demo and code it up. Use proper textures, use use proper vertex data. Um, use even the the binary compiler because it's the same game again. 
binary compiler is what I use. Somebody else, if if somebody else is interested, um, they can go finish Connor's work uh, since he's now at college or at Intel in the <coughs> summer. So he's a bit busy. Um, and he chose new um, IR infrastructure for Mesa. It can actually fit quite well uh, for this Mali version and for the two versions before, or for the two engines, uh, the two shader engines before. Um, and yeah, I have one demo which is looking quite nice uh, in comparison to what I showed off two years ago. You guys might remember this cube that was spinning for a bit and then the casting would go off completely and it becomes pretty ugly. But this time it actually works quite well. And about this binary compiler, um, ARM has a format called MBX. And so I was kind of hopeful that I could reuse MBX. So at least the part for that I built up um, like two years ago. And it's just a file that describes your uniforms live here, look like that, uh, your values and attributes here, live here and that, look like that. And then there's the blob with the, the actual um, shader binary in there. Turns out that this version of, uh, of MBS is looks the same, has the same kind of header files, or the same kind of headers every, every few bytes, uh, but all the content is pretty much different. So I got to rewrite that one as well. Yeah, so it's supposed to be the same. I know other projects would have probably chosen um, to continue the original <coughs> main, the original project. It's, it's completely separate hardware, it's completely separate code. It doesn't make sense to have everything in one code tree. Two separate drivers that are small and manageable, that's much nicer. So yeah, that's it. I'm very, very lazy this year. So the demo hardware is your box standard that Arm um, Chromebook that everybody has. Um, best seller on, on Amazon for a long while, I think, uh, in 2012, 2013. So it has a very, very bad kernel run. Uh, this is an installation from summer 2013. So uh, September, October 2013 is when I brought up the um, capture replay and brought up the, uh, the compiler or found the compiler in the, in, the, in the binary. It has the most horrible graphics driver that I have seen since I started doing this. Uh, doing graphics drivers for Linux, and I started in 20 2013. Sorry, 2002 is when I started. 11 years ago, when uh, mode setting wasn't a thing yet. There's a word that didn't exist yet at that time. Um, and <coughs> when I was still using that, uh, looking at um, register dumps, this driver has register du register dumps still today. Um, if you're doing a demo, then you usually want an external an external connector to work. Um, so if you plug in HDMI on this thing, in the especially in this version, if you plug in HDMI under X and you try to leave X, then you get a kernel panic. Uh, if you um, try to use, it has a KMS driver, but uh, it's only the name is KMS, I think, because if you try to use KMS frame through an overlay, um, you can allocate a buffer just fine and you can then try to assign it to an overlay and enable it. And then you get another nice kernel panic. <coughs> so my demo is going to be rendering to a bit of memory, then doing mem CPI to the frame buffer. <coughs> so it's, it's really great for performance. The Doom tries to work. Luckily, it's a dual core, so I, <laughs> I won't be using the other one. It's all in the same processor anyway. But uh, it's it's really terrible. Um, I was wondering for months and months why people are always complaining on, on IRC about how bad X and Alpha is, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. And the thing is the code is n has not improved enough. <coughs> what? It has been fixed. No, it hasn't. Uh, no, it might not kernel panic anymore, but <coughs> those register tables are still in there. It's like I never existed. <coughs> Again? Okay. So you're one of the Polish something guys, right? Oh, okay. And you're working quite hard on cleaning up the drivers, but I've seen no movement on 
uh, on getting these register tables outside of, 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 of this HDMI code. Okay, so, so it's a processing, okay. So you have written up a proper bit of code to do the PLL properly for the HDMI or if it's the old table. Ah, okay, yes, yeah, sorry, I thought I just asked you this earlier. So, yeah, let's just go through the meat and bones of this talk. Oh, let's show you the, 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 fifth, uh, the, yeah, the fifth slide so that you know that I at least have five slides. So this demo with the MEM CPI, uh, that's the wrong one. Um, I'm, there's nothing connected to this apart from HDMI and power, so there's no networking between the two of them. I'm just going to type, I'm just going to type the demo and whatever frames per second it's outputting, it's just going to scroll in the back while the uh, MEM CPI copy is just copying over. It's again, map frame buff FB def, Everything else didn't work on this antique version of a kernel. I hope that it's better, but you don't risk that sort of thing if you're doing this. You don't risk a slightly working version where you at least can demo something uh, for maybe something that works, but maybe not, and then you have nothing at this scale. So rather something broken and bad than something that doesn't work at all. You've probably seen this before, shortly before I showed off Twitch to your ring, uh, when I had three cubes sitting there, but now I thought of them with some movement. So what you see here is this FPS scrolling task in the back. <coughs> um, it's doing about 45 at this point, which is not too bad for no optimization whatsoever in MMCPI. There is something going wrong here because you sometimes see tile here, white, but I don't know what that is yet and it's no point trying to figure it out until I put a proper display right and I'll get a proper display of that right now. So what are we seeing here? Uh, we are seeing three different programs, one for the background, one for the flat shader, then one for the two pixel one, two different textures, um, four different draws. So background, one draw, second draw, third draw. Um, yeah, low vertex count, only eight there. It gets 4,200 something. What can I do already? Um, so job control is, is pretty much working. Um, jobs here are, um, instead of with the old Mali, you would submit a job for the vertex side. And that would then, it would have a command screen for one for the vertex shader. Job, uh, it, it would do that internally in the hardware one for vertex and one for tiler. So as one would come out, there, there would be sync points in them and it would just say to the tiler uh, engine, now you can also do this. Uh, and then you would run the fragment shader job at the end uh, manually uh, from user space. Now um, you set up uh, a structure with three different jobs described and they're running sequence. One is the, the vertex shader command or the, the vertex shader yeah, job is what it's called in, in the kernel. <coughs> One is the actual tiler where most of the, most of the meat and bones is. Um, the tiler is taking in all the geometry, um, taking in the actual draw <coughs> information and sticking that into tiler buffers so that it can be read up efficiently later on for shading, for, for turning the fragment shader off and, and uh, at and then show, uh, rendering uh, the final um, tile, which is 16 by 16, which sometimes comes by here and sometimes not. Um, so I know how to I know how to get this from the kernel because that's all documented at least. Uh, memory, uh, I can resize this as much as I want. I, ARM has something special with this version which is called transaction elimination. Um, so every tile 16 by 16 pixels uh, now gets a CR364 in hardware. Um, calculated as part of the tiling uh, probably, very likely. Uh, and if the CRC64 matches the previous tile, then the memory is not sent to the final renderer with the frame buffer. It's everything's the same memory bandwidth. <coughs> so at one point I saw uh, a bit of memory that was um, exactly the number of tiles large, uh, which divide, and each of the times eight, 
so I assume that it is that because otherwise you don't have that sort of information. Um, last time on the previous Mali series, um, there was. It was very interesting that there w the addresses for uh, the each end of the individual tiles was specially formed with a Hilbert curve, so that it would be cache efficient, so that it would be have um, locality that the tiles would in memory to next to each other, just as they would fit on the screen. Um, I hadn't heard of that since I don't have a proper IT background, but one of the SUSE guys knew that and told me about it and. I had got that solved after a year. So then the first time I should have been even know that I was a bit slower because of that. This time you don't even have that. You just give it the right amount of memory and it, it does all, all of that for you. Resize it. Um, I could run under other renders, but this demo is just, all the draws are just almost directly. Uh, I don't know how to, I haven't programmed up how to get the uniforms into uniform buffer. So all these rotation matrixes, I just know that you got this position. I just hard coded that now. It's just a bit of busy work. Um, typing, as I said before, is also not done. Um, what the varieties look like, what the attributes look like, where in memory they sit, how they should be ordered. Um, I know how that works because I had to change stuff. Uh, the original binary binaries for the shaders that came out of the dumps, they always had the positions for the attributes. The attributes of, for instance, the vertex beta and the texture coordinates, these were always rewritten in the shader afterwards. It's something that ARM for some reason likes to do. The new MBS format, so the binary, the, ma the Mali binary shader format, actually lists this, how to rewrite this. Um, at this location, you have to, there, there's the, this byte has the position of this uh, attribute, either vertex, beta, or, or the um, coordinates or something like that. Why they want to rewrite this, I don't know, because there the attributes are listed. That's also a nice table. If you alter the ordering in that table, you get the exact same result. I don't know. Maybe because they think it's fun or faster. Yeah, that's pretty much all I have to show and have to say this year. Then this is about 13,000 lines of code. This demo is only 2.6, but I'll parse it and everything else in, in place. So let me show you my, fin my final slide. Just, just again to show that I actually have one. So I wasn't that lazy. So questions? Oh, one more thing. Um, this program is currently rigged to do about, uh, it's doing, what, only 26 FPS? Okay, it's currently doing 26 FPS. It was always doing, it, it must be the weather here in Belgium because it was always doing 45 when I had performance on properly. Why, why? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, <laughs> so it's supposed to run, it's just, just a for loop for 100,000 times, but um, when I let it run for a few, what was it, half an hour or so, then it crashes and it always crashes at frame seven, seventeen, uh, seventy nine thousand five hundred thirty. Um, I've <coughs> looked at it on the train over the way over. Um, I just sat there for twenty minutes waiting to finally have this this one frame uh, come true. That's so slow, twenty one. It's usually all, it, uh, uh, yeah, never mind. It, it, at least it shows in light last time, uh, the first time. Um, so 79,530, I don't know why yet because the command screen looks the same. Something in my job submission is going wrong. Um, I'll find out, but I haven't had time yet. So yeah, questions? I'm sorry. Do I fear hardware bugs? No, I know that they're there. Why, why are do we fear it? They ship this. Uh, no, <laughs> I blame the kernel. <laughs> like with the HP in my driver, no, I, I blame the kernel. Yes? Yeah? Because it's the Mali P. And the last one, um, so when we did this, um, two 
of us, yeah, you were you're still at school, James. We're at coding, and coding went on talk to ARM. Uh, back in middle of 2012, we went and talked to ARM, and they weren't interested. Um, so at the uh, 2011, we talked to ARM, and they weren't interested in the middle of 2011. Um, shortly before we came here, or I came here in 2012, we talked to ARM a bit again, and the only thing they, they that they could come up with, the original name was the, I think it's just Alimari, right? Or is it just Alimari, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remali, Remali, Remali was the name. Um, Remali, because if you have the library that I had then developed, which was a bit of a framework, so I could write tests almost directly for the hardware, which is something I'm not doing this time. This time it's just a parser, and then I'm going to Meta almost directly. Uh, well, whenever I, I get to work on this again, that is. Um, so the Remali driver, if that was uh, pre-tended with lib, that was a really nice compli uh, really nice combination. But uh, what ARM said to that is, we have a train mark on that, and we don't want you to do that. So then we brainstormed a bit, and we just called it Lima. So since this driver is completely the same, uh, it's completely different, and it's called the Mali P, we just called it Tamil. It's the only word with those letters that uh, actually people know. It's a language, it's an area as well. Of, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, it's nothing personal, it's just, it just code. <laughs> with what? With no, it has to. Yeah, but no, no, no. I'm not an internationalization guy. I'm not that crazy. <laughs> One of my good friends in Nuremberg is, and he's, he's crazier than I am. Anything else? Well, then you can all go home. <laughs> no, um, before we uh, go here, um, it's been another unbelievable fast one. 23 live streams again this year. I know that they're not working yet, but I'm not working for everybody yet, but it's a lot of volume that's going out. And unlike last year, all the videos will be available almost immediately. So the FOSDEM organization did another wonderful job. So please applaud for them now. <laughs> the FOSDEM guys are amazing. Thanks a lot. 16 FPS. <laughs> <laughs> At home, you were so well behaved, apart from HDMI. <laughs>